I'm sitting with Dusty Burke, who lives about two blocks away from the former site of St. Vincent's Hospital and the Trauma One Emergency Room. Uh, Dusty, you have brought to the community over the last month some concerns that had not been on the table before, and that is how prepared is the city for any kind of emergency, large emergency, like a terrorist attack, a subway explosion, uh, a plane crash? The predictable surprise. Yes. <laughs> uh, how prepared uh, are they to take care of the citizenry since all the plans were centered at St. Vincent's, which is now closed? Were you able to find out from the police or the fire department or the mayor's office what the plans are? I haven't been able to find out where their uh, mass casualty protocols have shifted to. I actually have copies here, right here actually, of their mass casualty plans for St. Vincent's. And um, I've also got here a copy of this document, which is... Um, the predictable surprise, and this was... Um, now, that's the federal, that's Henry Waxman's committee, federal? The, yes, this is, and um, what they did was they took the, um, they did an exercise based on the Madrid bombing, and they did it, I think it was on a Tuesday night here in Manhattan, and at the time, uh, for this scenario, there were only 56 beds available in the entire city, so um, in 2008, Madrid, the, in, I was going to say in 2008, uh, with St. Vincent's in place, we were still unprepared prepared for that scale of uh, tragedy. Just to remind people, the St. Vincent's, uh, excuse me, the Madrid, uh, what happened in Madrid is at their principal train station, which we have within, right. we have Pennsylvania, Penn Station here, uh, there were terrorist attacks and bomb explosions, right. and over 200 people were killed in that incident, and many, many people were injured. So the federal government had an exercise in the city to see what would happen if something similar were to happen within this right. neighborhood. And it turned out that there were only 56 beds, and this is in 2008, yes. with St. Vincent's still in place. Yes. Now we do not have St. Vincent's, correct. and we have no beds. Is that correct? That's correct. Well, that's pretty scary. Yes, that's really pretty frightening. And I think that our pediatric triage uh, is... I, I don't know. I, I don't want to make a comment on our pediatric triage because... I can't, I can't seem to locate it. Well, there was a pediatric triage in St. Vincent's, right. but now there is no pediatric right. emergency room services from the ferry boat, all of those new babies that have been born in Battery Park City and all up the west, west right. side. We know there's been an explosion of kids in this neighborhood. There is no pediatric emergency room. So right. you've been on the, you've been trying really to find out where the hell is this plan and Who's going to take care of us if there's a tragedy and you've come up with nada, no plan? I just can't see, I can't see any plan in place. I see old plans. I see a lot of things that were in place before St. Vincent's and I just can't see how they possibly, it's not physically possible to shift the entire population of the west side to an overburdened east side. The, o the east side is already overburdened. Uh, we know that now already that they are so overburdened that the wait time in normal emergency right. room situations has been extended four to five hours, that the lack of right. beds, that people sometimes take 24 hours to get into a bed in the hospital. So you've right. inspired something here now, a group of, 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 of citizens in the West Village uh, and the West Side have organized to do what on Monday at 6 o'clock? <laughs> We're actually going to have our own little exercise, and we've decided as a community to come out and demonstrate the need to have a, uh, a hospital, a trauma center in the West Village that can... That can uh, take care of people on the west side. Uh, we're going to come out uh, in a theatrical way to make a point and we're going to be uh, dressed in gowns and prepared for a mass casualty and we'll have doctors treating people and uh, people lining up for triage and we're going to be calling around to different hospitals at the time, uh, figuring out what bed capacities they have so if there were an incident right now at this time Boom, how many beds are in the city available? How could we take care of the people on the west side? And uh, we're going to try and figure out, you know, better questions to be asking our, our emergency. It's quite shocking that not a single elected public official has raised this question about what happens if we have an emergency now that St. Vincent's is closed. Is that correct? Yes, and you know what's really interesting to me? I've spoken at um, two DOH meetings for the Department of Health and um, one for CB2, and I haven't 
or two, maybe even two for CB2. I haven't seen one mention. I see all the min I see all the minutes of the meetings. I see no mention of mass casualty or pandemic preparedness plans. Um, I've I was told that they do have them, but I have never seen them, and I I can't for the life of me how they expect how they figure out me. Or how they figure out I'm going to be able to find my husband who's in Soho and my children who are at school with no proper hospital to go to, you know. Not only that, but we just went through the hurricane situation right. where we were expecting a direct hit by right. the hurricane and the mayor was calling for evacuations of people. Right. But when he was asked what would happen if it hit, he had no answer that I heard about where people were going to be taken. Right, right. Well, That's a real-time, real-life experience that we just went through. Well, one of the things that opened this conversation for me was during the hurricane, I ended up collecting the tiles from the original 9-11 memorial. And I went out there myself the morning of the hurricane with another woman who has to be not in her 20s, and we started clipping that fence okay. down. Within, this is the community spirit, within 35 minutes, there were 100 people surrounding the fence, taking tiles down in an orderly fashion. We organized ourselves, we got everything down, and we got the job done. And I look at this and feel like we need to know what our plan is, and we need to be able to, as a community, take ownership if we want to be able to volunteer our services. We've got to have a hospital here. We've got to have people who can show up at the hospital. We need to, we need to be thinking ahead. Head Just so people understand the tiles, at uh, the corner of 7th Avenue South and Greenwich Avenue, there's an MTA station right. uh, with parking and cars going in and out. Right. And, ar and around it was a chain link fence. Right. And um, a project was started by community people of having children and adults make tiles honoring uh, different people who had died at 9-11 and the rescue teams and the first responders. And they were all hung up. Uh, right. all along the fence and it became a major tourist attraction right. and it really reminded people because when the hospital closed all the signage that was there was taken down by the Rudin family. Right. Uh, the, so, so what happened here in this hurricane emergency people came out to rescue the tiles well we know that the tiles could be rescued right. but what if it was human beings who were caught in a tidal right. wave downtown here we are talking about the hospital this is what opened up the conversation for us I live around the corner for the hospital. I see that you guys are having rallies, and I'm guilty because I'm one of those people who said, I'm busy on Saturday, I can't really get over there, but I know that you're going to be there representing me. Only everyone said that, so there's always a small handful of people who really care who show up, and the general population who really wants the hospital and needs the hospital is not well informed, and if it had not been for the tiles, I wouldn't be here today talking about this. I'd be busy at my okay, desk. Okay, Dusty? I want you to make a personal pitch okay. to the people that live in this neighborhood who if I speak to them on the street, they say it's awful what's happened with no hospital, but have done nothing. They've left it to the politicians to solve the problem. We now know that the politicians have not solved the problem. In fact, they put collectively their heads in the sand. They are the problem. They are a part of the problem. So what, so maybe you should invite your fellow neighbors to come on Monday and become more involved because only the citizens are going to stop this. The politicians are not. I'd love if everybody in Manhattan could come, but really the people on the west side, if, you're, if you've got kids, if you're in school, if you're a senior, if you need health care, if you're concerned at all about the future of our community, um, I'd love for you to come out and join us on on. Uh, Monday, Monday, <laughs> Monday at six o'clock uh, in, front of, Saint in front of Saint Vincent's. We'll be out there uh, uh, giving demonstrations and doing triage, and you know we'll be out there in full regalia, uh, trying to inspire people to wake up and realize we don't have a hospital and there's nowhere to go. So, and this is a theatrical experience. No one will really be injured, but it's a teaching experience exactly. to say to the neighborhood and to the mayor, right. and to the elected officials, look, if there's an emergency in this community, anywhere from Battery Park City to 59th Street or 114th Street, where right. they, there, there's no trauma one, people are going to die unless you begin to think about putting it in place. And it's up to each one of us 
to bring our neighbors and say, please, come and show up so that the politicians will stop doing nothing and really stand up. There's a way, I always believe, or maybe I should ask you, do you think that there's a way to, to maybe negotiate the kind of a smaller hospital within the housing complex that is being proposed? You know what I really think? I think that the Rudin family is not aware. I think that no one, I don't think anyone was really paying attention to how critical this hospital was. And I think they at one point proposed a hospital which was bigger than the community wanted. But I actually would prefer myself to have a bigger hospital and to really take the opportunity to rethink this project and turn it into one of the top uh, medical facilities in the country with an incredible uh, trauma center and we can do that and there is a revenue stream for that and I think that once the Rudin family and the city realizes the unique opportunity we have having this land uh, having the hospital gutted and be ready to start fresh I think that I, they'll get another group in there. Do I hear you correctly that you're saying to the Rudin Real Estate Corporation, you can still make your money. You know, it doesn't have to be condos. It can be a first-class hospital. Right. Well, you know, the, the they have the Rudins have donated land to North Shore Lenox Hill right. and the old tool building. They donated right. it most likely because it's landmarked and they can't build on it. They can't put any condos over there. But what do you think? It, will that uh, emergency services? high-end urgent care center with its two beds, will that serve the questions that you're bringing to the table about a pandemic? No. And for me, when I hear that a hospital only has two beds, then I instantly think, well, there must be sort of a rule that says in order to call yourself a hospital, you have to have at least two beds, so we're going for the bare minimum here. So, um, no, that's not a hospital I would want to go to in an emergency. It won't be prepared to handle it. It'll give a lot of people, not just everyday people, but in a disaster, it'll give a lot of people false hope. Um, I, I think we really need to take a look at this, um, this real estate and really think how it can best serve the community uh, in, a, in a lot of different situations as a community center, not just for lunch on Saturday afternoon in the park, but really um, in times of need, our city's going to be able to need that real estate to, um, to take care of our people, and we're going to need to know how to help do that. Well, I, I hear you've invited every resident of the west side to come <laughs> on Monday night. That includes the seniors and the kids. This is something everyone can come and participate in. And will you be the nurse in charge or one of the <laughs> nurses in charge? Or will we have to wait to see what you have on? I think you'll have to wait to see what role I'll be playing in this scenario. But uh, we do have um, some very interesting people. We've got a gentleman who's uh, been with the military and served on big ships and decontamination uh, capacities. And um, just a lot of really interesting, I think it's going to be, a unique, interesting crowd of people, and I'm not sure how many of you are going to get up off the couch and come down and support us, but just know, you might be thinking one of your neighbors is coming, and they might not be, so go knock on their door and make sure they come with you, because we really, we need them to see the numbers, we need them to see that we care, and you need to figure out where you're going to go if something happens. And it's an educational lesson about what right. the reality of a loss of a hospital means with a trauma one emergency room to this community. Okay, Dusty, thank you very much. Sure, thank you.